good morning students in previous classes we discussed about circle lesson in that we learnt some basic concepts of circle and some definition like secant tangent chord etc and also we discussed two important theorems on circles theorem 1 and theorem 2 and we solved some problems in exercise 4.1 now we'll move on to next exercise 4.2 which is in your textbook page number 102 in this exercise we have 13 problems these 13 problems i have divided into two part 7 plus 6 so today let us discuss seven problems next class that means thursday will continue other six problems so these seven problems are related to theorem 1 as you all know what is a theorem 1 state theorem 1 statement the tangent at any point of circle is perpendicular to the radius through the point of contact that means the radius and the tangent are perpendicular to the point of contact that means to relate it to theorem 1 we will solve these seven problems and remaining six are related to second theorem so let us move on to this first question in exercise 4.2 just observe from a point q that means here point of contact is q or an it is an other point from a point q the length of tangent to a circle is 24 cm and the distance of q from the center is 25 cm the radius of the circle is in your textbook they have not given the figure we have to write that means take one circle draw one tangent to that circle mark the outside point as q and here they are saying that from q from q the length of tangent see this is the length of tangent the length of tangent is 24 cm and the distance of q from the center look here this is the center from point q it is 25 cm what will be the radius that means what is op here so they have given the option here this is mcq type question they have given 7 cm 12 cm 15 cm and 24.5 cm here the answer is 7 cm how we got that 7 cm let me explain here as you all know the theorem 1 what does the theorem 1 states this radius this radius is perpendicular to the tangent as you all know perpendicular means 90 degree that means the 90 degree is angle p see angle p is 90 degree here you can observe that we can observe one triangle here opq is a triangle here so for any triangle if one of the angle is 90 degree then we can apply pythagoras theorem is it right so in any triangle if one of the angle is 90 degree then we can apply pythagoras theorem what is the pythagoras theorem says in right angle triangle the square of the hypotenuse look here the square of the hypotenuse is equal to sum of the square of other two sides sum of the square of other two sides so here which is a hypotenuse how to observe which is an hypotenuse means the side which is opposite to the 90 degree the side which is opposite to the 90 degree that means here p is 90 degree the side opposite to 90 degree is oq so oq square square of hypotenuse is equal to sum of other two sides you can take any side first you can take pq square plus op square look here here again i am repeating just observe pythagoras theorem says sum square of hypotenuse in a right angle triangle 
square of hypotenuse is equal to sum of square of other two sides so here hypotenuse is nothing but the side at the long you can say that longest side in the right angle triangle is also hypotenuse but generally we can say that the side which is opposite to 90 degree is hypotenuse that is oq square is equal to we took op square plus pq square this is the pythagoras theorem so let us substitute let us change the equation in terms of OP because they are asked to find the radius. Here radius is OP. Here radius is OP. So let us take OP to the LHS. Let us send OQ to the RHS. So it became OP square is equal to OQ square minus OP square. Or better you can keep it OP as it is. You can take PQ this side. Just observe here. Here. OQ square here OQ square is equal to OP square plus PQ square just you keep OP there itself you take PQ that side so it became OQ square minus PQ square so let us interchange LHS, LHS and RHS so OP square is equal to let us substitute what is OQ here 25 25 square what is pq square it is 24 24 square so 25 square is 625 24 square is 576 so if we subtract those two we'll get 49 that means we got op square is equal to 49 but we want op so when you're changing square to the rhs it became square root the square root of 49 is 7 then the radius is 7 so our answer is 7 understood so again i am repeating whenever if they give the distance like this the dis the cent the distance between center to the point and point of contact to the point and the radius the figure must be like this clear let us move on to next question question number two please observe or please listen two to three times then only you can understand so second question listen in figure 4.11 or 4.11 if tp and tq are two tangents to a circle with center o so that angle poq is equal to 110 degree then angle ptq is equal to dash here okay observe this is the figure given this is the figure so in this they have mentioned that tp and tq are tangents s tp tq are tangents at two tangent to a circle with center o so that they have given one angle poq is equal to 110 degree then ptq is equal to dash if we observe this it seems like a theorem too that's right but I told these problems are related to theorem 1. How let us check. Just observe here. What is the here? Let's observe. What is the theorem says? The radius is perpendicular to the tangent at point of contact. Observe here. This is 90 degree perpendicular. Then here this is 90 degree perpendicular. Both are. This is the tangent and the radius are both are perpendicular point of contact p here here also oq is a radius tq is a tangent their perpendicular point of contact q so in both the cases their angle is equal to 90 degree because theorem 1 because theorem 1 now he observed this it is looking like a quadrilateral as you know the figure which has four sides we call it as quadrilateral let us add all the angles of this quadrilateral. Look here. Which are the angles here? Angle O, angle P, angle T and angle Q. Let me write. First let me take P, O, Q. Angle P, O, Q. Angle O, P, T. Angle O, Q, T. Plus angle P, T, Q is equal to 360 degree. As you know that the sum of the angles of quadrilateral is equal to 360 degree. You learned this in 9th standard. Let me substitute here as the given part is 
POQ is 110 degree. 90 degree, 90 degree we got from theorem 1. And we have to find PTQ. Let me keep as it is. 360 degree. If we add all these things, we get 290. Angle PTQ is equal to 360. Angle PTQ is equal to, let me take 290 to the RHS. It became minus. So if, if we subtract these two, we got the answer 70 degree. But this is the MCQ question, right? But in exam, you have to do all these things together, correct? It takes some time. But as soon as if you observe the angle between the radius, you can tell the angle between the tangent easily. How? Let me see here. Here, what is an angle here? Let me check. What is an angle of P here? Angle of P is 90. Angle of Q is 90. Both together what we got? 180 degree. Correct? Remaining is, if you subtract 360 minus 180, remaining is again 180. That means if we add this angle, that means angle O and angle T, both of them again we have to get 180 degree. That means if we take the sum of these two angles, the sum of these two angles are supplementary. That means if we add these two angles, we have to get 180 degree. So, as soon as if you observe the angle between the radius that is 110 degree, just you subtract from 180, you will get 70. This is how it is the shortest method. As if it is like MCQ question, directly you mark 70 degree. We go for another example. Let me consider, let me consider the angle is 100 degree. Here, in between the radius, it is 100 degree. What will be the answer? 180 minus 100 it is answer is and uh, our answer is 80 degree yes there is no need to do all these steps if it is mcq question remember if it is mcq question directly you subtract from 180 you will get the answer but if it is one mark question or two marks question you have to do this all these steps correct now and let me go for next one. Here only just observe here. See, if they will give, let me uh, observe, there is no 110 degree here. Here they have given 40 degree. What will be the angle between the radius? What will be the angle between the radius? Again, subtract 180 minus 140. Here the angle will be 140 degree. Clear? So, sum of these two again, we will get 180 degree. Clear? So, this is our second question. This is about second question. I think all understood. Let me move on to next question. If a tangents PA and PB, here the tangents PA and PB from a point P to a circle with center O are inclined to each other of 80 degree, then angle POA is equal to. So, look here. Here they have given the tangent. They are mentioning P and PB are the tangents in with center O inclined each other at. That means they have given this one 80 degree. This is 80 degree. This part is this angle is 80 degree here. Clear? Ah, now, which is just now I told you the shortest method. If this is 80 degree, what will be this one? What will be this one? This one will be 180 minus 80 is 100. Full completely. The full angle is 100. So here just observe. Here angle APB. Here angle APB. Here angle APB is 80 degree. So, therefore, angle AOB is 100 degree. Therefore, angle this is 100 degree. Because they are supplementary angles. But AOB is 100. But they are asking POA. POA. As PO is a bisector, here PO, PO is bisector, bisector.
are here bisects so if anything is bisect it divides the angle into two equal parts right so poa is equal to half of aob so half of 100 is 50 degree let me go for in the same question let me change the angle now so let me consider this as 70 degree what will be the aob it will be 130 degree sorry 110 degree so this is 70 degree so this becomes this is 70 degree this becomes 110 degree so half of this is 55 degree half of this is 55 so this is how you have to remember the angle between the two tangents and the sum of the angle between the radius they both are supplementary that means the sum of two angles are equal to 180 degree if one is given just you subtract from 180 you will get the other if anything it is if a line is bisector bisects in between the angle then the angle is divided into two equal parts clear yes okay